Hey everyone, welcome back to the range. My name is Matt. Hey look, it's a stripper. It's a stripper clip. We've got some 5.56 by 45 millimeters to check out today from Ruag, Rog. This is a Norma brand bullet. Let's throw him on the table and talk about what we're gonna do today. In full transparency, I myself purchased this ammunition for me to test because I saw it on sale one weekend on Norma's website. At, as Matt over at CRS Firearms has discovered recently, not all M193 or 55 grain full metal jacket is created equally. Generally speaking, if the box is labeled 223 Remington and it's says M193 or 55 grain full metal jacket, they will say it's going upwards of 3,400 feet per second, but that's typically out of a 24 or 26 inch barrel. Anything that's marked 5.56 by 45 and 55 grain full metal jacket or M193 is generally supposed to be going 3,250 from a 20 inch barrel. There's usually more pressure in our 5.56 loading. So that's kind of what I'm here for. You know, I'm gonna give you a velocity rundown over you know four barrel or five barrel lengths, a seven and a half inch, 10 and, 10 and a half inch, 16, 20, and 22. Someone has offered me a 24. I don't have that yet, but that ought to be interesting. So I'm gonna give you you know the velocity, I'm gonna give you a practical accuracy, and then send you on your merry way. It's around 40 to 45 degrees outside today, and we've got our Pro Chrono Digital DLX as always. We'll start with our shortest barrel length. This is our seven and a half inch upper Yankee Hill QD muzzle brake. PSA parts everywhere, Magpul furniture, nice little pistol. Pretty much my use for it is velocity testing, the amount of concussion that comes off this. I'm not sure what else you would use this for other than blasting. Quite a bit of muzzle flash coming off this short barrel. Velocity wise, it's, it's pretty cold outside today, 40, 45 degrees. And I think this is gonna be the slower of the two loads that we test today. And now our 10 and a half inch upper, another Palmetto State Armory build. Got the Radeon ambidextrous charging hand on here, as well as the Battle Arms ambidextrous safety selectors, mission first tactical stock, the Yankee Hill QD muzzle brake up front. This has the AIM single stage trigger in this lower. Got the KCI Korean magazines from Global Ordnance. Nice, not too bad. Picking up a good bit of velocity going from a seven and a half inch to 10 and a half inch barrel. Now for our 16 inch, this is a Stag Arms Model 1L, meaning it's actually left hand eject. Basic AR, got the Mission First tactical stock on here, mag pull, pistol grip, Hyperfire 24C trigger. Love this trigger. It's been in this gun a long time, been very reliable. Got a BCM ambidextrous charging handle our Battle Arms Ambidextrous Safety Selectors. I think I've said ambidextrous enough. This is the Ross Unimag in here. Oh, almost 3,100 feet per second on that last shot. Looks like this load is more optimized towards our longer barrels. And now for our Franken AR, this is a 20 inch PSA upper. Got the premium FN double chrome line, one and seven twist barrel. The Chinesium Stag Arms ambidextrous charging handle from a couple years ago. Uh, no name, local lower on here. 
pretty much just a bunch of parts I threw together together to make a gun. Not too shabby there. And finally, the longest 5.56 that I own currently, a 22 inch TC compass in our Oryx chassis. A very nice setup here. Someone has offered to send us a 24 inch upper. That would be very interesting for that velocity gain, if any, going with an extra two inches of barrel. See if we get 3,300 feet per second. Get anything, yeah. Make sure I'm lined up here. Eh, eh. Oh, it might be a little too high. Oh, 3200. Air, you jerk. Short two, I'll make it up off camera. A little shy in the velocity department. I fired independence off camera today to check these two loads that I'm doing today. And I got over 3,300 feet per second with the independence. So this stuff's a little on the slow side. Probably would consider this more of a higher end 223 loading, lower end 556 spec based on these velocities alone. Here is our RUAG M193 at 100 yards TC compass, 3 to 9 power scope. This was with no suppressor, 0.997 inches, very exceptional for a 55 grain full metal jacket. There is a little bit of wind today, but it's not a crosswind. I think I'm shooting into the wind because I'm shooting from east to west and the wind is blowing from the east to west. Here was a suppressed shot with the JK Armament Rifle Kit, 0.793 inches. And then our final group, which was our best, was 0.753 inches, five shot group. I'm not gonna complain about this. That is, this, this is on the same day that we shot the Indian M193 for DS Arms, and we bested, you know, right around inch, a little over inch and a half there. So this is a very good grouping from a 55 grain full metal jacket. I will not complain about that. Your mileage may vary though. Well, everyone, I'm just a little bit sad. I'm still in the hunt for a replacement for our Independence M193. I consider that top tier when it comes to maximum velocity. Now, everyone may not be after maximum velocity because there is a point at which your accuracy would degrade, and I think that's what we saw here today. Our RUAG that I tested on the same day as the Indian M193 had the best accuracy of those two loads, and it also was the slowest. I think it's time for me to skedaddle. At the end of all my videos, I take a moment to thank all of those who helped make these possible. Number one is my Patreon supporters, and number two is you all for watching. Until next time, I'll catch you at the range. Thank you.